For those of you guys that do not know or didn't watch my last video, then you guys wouldn't know that I had surgery done. Long story short, I have to just explain everything that fucking happened from start to finish because originally, if you guys did watch my last video, my botched video, then um, you guys would know that I was supposed to go through a deflation process and then from there go in and replace the implants. But before I get into this story, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all of your super sweet messages. This past week has probably been one of the most difficult weeks that I've experienced in my life. Um, just because, you know, I was confronted with a lot of shit that I had to just kind of like I just had to deal with it. You guys were there for me and you know, reading your guys' uh, sweet comments and messages and, and all that good stuff really did help me feel better about my situation and about, you know, like being public about it and stuff. So I went in for my deflation last week on Friday. I believe it was Friday, was it Thursday or Friday? No, it was Thursday. So I went in last Thursday to Dr. Nguyen's office. Um, Dr. Nguyen is my surgeon. I get there. And I'm so nervous, you guys. You guys already know how nervous I've been about this whole, just, just everything about this just makes me so nervous. I went in and it was literally a surgery. So I sat there, I sat in the waiting room, I shed a few tears, I was so nervous. My mom was there, my assistant was there and they were just, you know, supporting me. I wasn't actually under, like I wasn't like knocked out or anything. Um, they just ended up injecting some like local anesthesia and um, they just made the area numb that they were gonna be like, you know, um, poking a hole in. Dr. Nguyen numbed me and um, he pretty much explained to me um, what we were gonna do all over again. That's one thing that I really fucking appreciate about Dr. Nguyen. He explained everything to me multiple times and I was clear enough with him and I was clear with him and he was clear with me and I think that's what really, really helped for this surgery. We, we were using communication. And finally, he pokes the hole into my implant and I'm just like nervous and I kind of noticed right away that he was kind of a little bit confused because um, he had to poke another hole and he was like um, are you sure your implants are saline and I was like yeah I was like yeah he was like yeah I don't think that your implants are saline I don't think they're they're saline I will try again but I don't think they're saline if they were saline they literally would have um, I literally wouldn't have even made the second hole if they were saline put it that way so I was like, huh, okay. And I was feeling confused. I was so confused because the entire time, this entire year, I literally thought I had saline implants. I legit thought I had saline implants. And in my head, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, it's not saline. If it was saline, they would have fucking popped like crazy because with silicone implants, it's like a gel. And it's 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 like compact. You can't, it's, it's not a fluid, so you can't drain it. Um, so literally when he took out the needle, he showed me the needle and on the needle I was actually able to see like a little bit of gel residue. It was just like a little bumpy. It made the, the needle look bumpy. Like it wasn't a liquid, it was like a gel. And he was like, you know what? He was like, I don't think your implants are saline. I'm gonna try the other breast and let's see if, you know, I don't know, let's just see. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Let's let's move on to the next one. But I was just like, there's no way if this one isn't saline, this one is, you know? So that fucking happened and turns out that they're not saline implants. So we fucking, I get dressed again and I go into the office and I'm talking to, um, I'm talking to one of the nurses and I'm like, what, what is going on? Like, I literally don't know what's going on. And she was like, so pretty much you don't have saline implants. So with that being said, I literally, like I was told that my implants were saline. And from my knowledge, I knew that they were saline. And the reasoning why they were saline was because of my age because of my age, I was I was younger then, I was 18. And um, my surgeon had told me that we were gonna use saline because of my age. What's up you guys? So today is the day of deflation and um, I'm super nervous. Uh, I didn't even go to sleep early last night. It's kind of early right now, it's barely nine. Uh, nine, about to be 9.30. <laughs> my video is going live at 11 so that's literally when I'm getting it done right yeah so my video is going live at 11 
and um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it is what it is, but I'm nervous. I'm on my way right now, um, and I think they're gonna numb me first and probably let me chill for a little bit, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, and then they're gonna get started on the drainage, and um, that's that. And then we wait a fucking month Starting until the actual surgery date. So you guys, um, I didn't end up getting my boobs deflated. Turns out that they're not even saline implants, so I'm dealing with that now. And um, we just went ahead and made a decision of just going straight into surgery as of Monday. Today's Friday, I literally like, I don't know. It was just a fucking like, a huge shock like I felt so embarrassed when I was laying there and the surgeon told me that they're not even saline like it looked as if I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about like that's ridiculous so he poked and he poked and poked but nothing was coming out it was gel so I scheduled it for Monday I'm getting um, four I think I'm leaning more towards the 450 cc's just slightly bigger but smaller at the same time high profile um i'm scared to run the risk of getting samasty again so i want it bigger but i don't think that's i don't think that's realistic so that's what is going on now and um i'll keep you guys updated that's literally what I thought I had for an entire year. So I was so upset and I was so fucking frustrated when when I was confronted with my new surgeon, Dr. Nguyen, and I felt embarrassed. I was like, I, I genuinely didn't know that my implants are silicone. So from there on out, we kind of discussed things and we decided that we needed to get these these implants out already you know there was a hole in them and i didn't feel comfortable with knowing that there was a hole in them and you know i was just mentally prepared for the surgery and it didn't end up happening we kind of just ended up coming to the conclusion that we needed to do my actual implant exchange surgery right away i ended up um scheduling my surgery for monday which was um the 18th of june it took forever to fucking get to monday like it felt I don't know it felt so long i was so nervous and i was just thinking about it i was like dude like i'm so terrified of going through surgery again like what if my results aren't what i want them to be still like maybe i just i don't know i just i was so stressed out and i was thinking the worst but i was also thinking the best but it was just it's just difficult you know surgery at this point i literally was traumatized from my first surgery after a year finding out that my implants were silicone you know i don't know and the thing is you guys the thing is i had paperwork yes but i don't even like why would i like i the last thing that i would think that i would have to do is revise my paperwork to like make sure that i got what i asked for do you know what i mean so or not even what i asked for because i didn't even really know about surgery what the what the surgeon recommended me so it was just weird like i didn't think that i would have to do that but obviously you do and now from here on out i've been super super cautious of everything i sign everything that i see making sure everything is on check and that i am literally on the same page as the surgeon and the surgeon is the same is on the same page as me you know i don't risk any of that shit anymore that's one thing that i really like about Dr. Nguyen because I literally I gave him my entire trust and I and I actually told him like I told him once I was like hey I don't want you to feel like I'm doubting your work or I'm doubting your abilities or anything like that I'm just being very cautious about what I'm doing and I don't want to 
not be on the same page and us not understand each other with that being said i went in on monday to get my surgery dr nguyen came in to the little room that i was in and then he ended up sketching everything out on my chest and he showed me um what they would look like after and one thing that i did discuss with um dr nguyen i gave him full consent to make the decision of whether or not to place the implants during my surgery if he feels like Putting the implants in will not look good and the stitching doesn't go well or whatever. Please just take the implant out and leave me without boobs. Leave me without boobs, but if you feel like it looks good and if you feel like it's not going to be a botched job all over again, then go for it. And I gave him consent. While I was in the room, he told me... Um, this is how much we're going to be stitching and this and this and that. Your nipples will be um, in the right position and they'll be way higher up. I'm going to insert a picture here of, you know, the actual surgery. Um, the picture that they took while one of my implants was fixed and one of them was not fixed. I think it might be on the right side. But the implant that isn't done, you can see all the sketching that Dr. Nguyen had done. He told me, um, so I'm just going to be very honest with you. I can't promise you whether or not you're going to walk out with boobs. I don't know until I'm in there and, you know, I see how damaged you are. Um, so with that being said, he told me that there was a 30% chance that I would walk out with boobs. So that means that 70% meant that I was going to walk out with, with no boobs. So I literally, I just started crying. I was just like, fuck. Like, I don't know, because I just, I, in my head, I just, I was thinking like, you know what? If I end up coming out with no boobs, it's literally not fucking meant to be. Like, it's not meant to be. And I don't want to go through another surgery. So literally, like, I was just, ugh, I was just upset when he told me that. I was scared. And I was like, I was just I just didn't know what to expect. I literally had no clue what I was going to walk out with. The surgery was about two hours and I woke up and the first thing I fucking asked was, do I have boobs? And I did. And I fucking, I literally had boobs, you guys. And I was so fucking excited. I was like, fuck, oh my God, like I'm so fucking happy. And literally, I swear to you guys, as soon as... As soon as I saw my boobs, I literally just started crying. They looked so fucking good. As soon as they showed me the picture that I, sh I just showed you guys, um, I started fucking crying. I could not fucking believe that Dr. Nguyen was able to make such a fucking difference in my breasts. Literally, like... I was just so shook because I knew that I was botched. Yes, I knew I had somastia and I knew that my breasts were extremely low. But seeing it side by side like that, I was just fucking shook. I was so shook and I was just so like, I was, I, I didn't even know what to say. And I saw it and I was just like, oh my god, like, this is literally how I I wanted my boobs. Like, I, this is how I've always imagined my boobs since the first surgery around. He stitched all down here under the boob and he also stitched um, on my actual, like, uh, my sternum area, like my chest area there to literally create cleavage for me. So, like, my boobs look like boobs now. And before, I feel like they fucking looked like... I don't know, like pancakes or something. They were just so flat and so like not real looking at all, at all. And the fucked up thing is that I literally looked like that from the very start, from the very fucking start. So I don't know, like just seeing my boobs like this is insane, in fucking insane. I saw that I was getting a lot of questions um, as to why I didn't go back to my surgeon um, that originally did my first job for the revision and why I decided to get a new one, why I didn't go to any other one specifically. And um, the simple answer is, you guys, I honestly lost trust in my surgeon. Um, who the fuck would go back to their surgeon that botched them 
for a revision you know what i mean that was literally the last thing that i wanted to do and one thing i want to say for a fact is that i i was keeping up with my surgeon in the beginning like i said i got my first surgery june 5th of um 2017 i like started to have problems with my boobs literally right off the bat i had actually went back to speak to my surgeon um in july um literally a month later after my surgery because i was kind of uh concerned about the way my boobs looked and in result of me going to see my surgeon i was told to use a shoelace to fix my semastia to fix it um a shoelace literally like i don't even know how to really explain it to you guys but it was some like su like super mickey mouse like resolution to fix semastia and it was literally to wear like a thick um shoelace wrap it over your head and cross it over under your boobs but in reality like a month after surgery put, put, put it this way a month after surgery doing some shit like that it, like really i don't know it, it just didn't really make sense to me it didn't make sense to me at all but i did it i did the stupid shoelace method i did do it it gave me rope burn it was not comfortable it was it made no difference it literally made no fucking difference i followed the instructions and i did it after that i never heard from my surgeon again i honestly lost all hope at that point because i had literally gone to speak to my surgeon about my concern and i was told to use a shoelace to fix it and um that was that i've been super good and i've been feeling good and i'm super happy with my result i felt like i just came back to life because i felt so depressed for an entire year of my life and it, it, it was way more than just boo it's a part of me and it's something that i was insecure about and i wanted to fix that insecurity it felt like this weight had just fucking lifted off my shoulders and i'm i'm barely a week post-op and they're looking so good the swelling has gone down a lot and um you know now we're just taking it day by day it's insane though because you know my job is to be in the public eye and one thing for sure is that it was impossible for me to be able to do my job and put 100% into it when I didn't feel 100% myself. I feel like this surgery really did um, teach me how to love myself on a level that I didn't know how to love myself on before. Um, and it's helped me with my job. I feel so good and I feel so confident. I just feel like myself now. And um, I'm really happy. With that being said, you guys, I really just want to emphasize again how important it is for you to be straight the fuck up with your surgeon, communicate with your surgeon, and just be straightforward. If you don't know something, just ask. Don't be embarrassed. Ask whatever you want, even if you sound so fucking stupid. The point is, if you don't feel 1000% trustworthy of your surgeon, don't get the surgery. And the thing is, I understand what it feels like to be overly excited for your surgery, and that's kind of what happened with my first one i was just so excited that i literally forgot that it's surgery i was just like okay let's do it yeah yeah i just want boobs i want boobs i want boobs you have to yes it's okay to be excited but you just have to make sure that you're aware that this is something super serious and you know just kind of slow down and check yourself because this is something that can either make you or break you it's important for you guys to understand that i'm human as well and this is some real shit that happens to anybody it could happen to anyone it could happen to you it happened to me so you're about 10 days out now yes. from the surgery and you're doing very well mm -hmm. and I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Um, what we found in um, your breasts were that the breasts are very inferiorly placed. Mm -hmm. um, so the distance between your nipples to the um, bottom of your breast is 14 centimeters. So mm -hmm. it's quite long so that when um, you look at your breasts, I'm pretty sure that you are aware yeah. that your breasts were very low. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's what we found, that the implants were very low. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, your breasts are placed very close together, and so it lifts the skin in the middle of your chest up. So you had a condition, what people call uh, semastia, which mm -hmm. is the technical term, and the lay people call it the, it's kind of, 
funny but it's called Unibu yeah. and, and it's not really pleasant but that's, right. that's what people call it. Uh -huh. And so what we tried to do was to put everything back to where it belonged, mm -hmm. uh, to reconstruct it so that uh, the implant sits in the right position. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we lift the pocket of your breast up and also so the sort of like the unification of your two breasts in the middle so that it separate the left right. breast from the right breast. To create the cleavage as Correct. well. Mm -hmm. Right. So that when you wear a bra, when you push your breast together, you don't have kind of a sort of like one breast, right. the quote unquote unibu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now with the surgery, if I wear a bra, my boobs aren't even going to be able to touch themselves, right? Since that, the stitching is there? Right. That's what we were tr uh, trying to do. Um, we hope that everything will heal well. Right. Um, we depend on the sutures and the cauterization of the pocket to bring that skin back down to the sternum to hold the breast separate. Right. So that when you wear something compressive or something tight, the breast will come together, but you still yeah, have a touch. groove. Right. But they don't they don't come up so that you get kind of like one breast uh -huh. from left to right. It's also super important to communicate with your surgeon and thank you so much for making me feel comfortable with being able to communicate with you as well as everybody else in the office. Um, I feel like that's really really what helped me and what what allowed me to give you my trust to you know my reconstruction surgery and I'm so happy with the results and I feel like my breasts look like breasts now. <laughs> Well, uh, we're, we're very glad to be able to help you and um, you've been very pleasant and you know for, for us it's always very important that the patient are aware of what we are planning on mm -hmm. doing and what's the likelihood of success. Right. As you are aware, you know, I'm, I was very careful when we discussed about what we can expect from right. the outcome of your surgery mm -hmm. and uh, we try not to over promise, uh, we try to kind of keep your expectation at a reasonable level, but we try to deliver more than mm -hmm. what we promise you. So, yeah, definitely, yeah. and I, I really respect that because I feel like that's something that's kind of always just up in the air. And of course, everybody goes into surgery wanting the best, but I think overall it's just important to just be honest of you know what's real realistic and what isn't realistic. So I just want to say thank you again so so much for being so supportive of this journey you guys it means the world to me and i hope that this helped you guys um you know think about surgery again and you know maybe it's not for you maybe it is but just be cautious with whatever you guys end up deciding um i love you guys so so much and i'm excited to be back I expect plenty of videos soon to come bitch um, with that being said, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.